Hey everyone, it's Shailen and I'm here today with another writing video. No, the title is not clickbait. Today I'm going to be telling you how to basically instantly improve your writing with one small tip, unless you already know the thing, in which case you're already one step ahead of me. Today I'm going to be teaching you about filtering. This is something that is very easy to implement into your writing. By doing this one thing, your prose will read smoother. It's gonna enhance the punch of your images. It's gonna tighten your point of view, remove telling, and it's also going to fix monotonous sentence rhythm by cutting the subject verb construction at the start of sentences. Basically, this is just an all around great thing that I really want to share with you. So let's talk about filtering. So what a filter is, is a form of telling. Um, and basically what it is, it is taking a step back from the story. And instead of directly showing us an image or a thought, first it's showing the experience of the character. It's kind of hard to understand those terms, but I'm gonna read a paragraph that has a lot of filters in it. Lily saw a blue pickup truck rumble down the street. She smelled the acrid exhaust. She heard rain patter against the concrete and felt it beat up on her face. She realized the street was starting to flood. Now, this is pretty bad writing and there's really nothing interesting going on here. Even when we cut the filters, this is gonna be pretty bad writing because none of these details are that interesting. In that paragraph, the filters were Lily saw, she smelled, she heard, felt, and she realized. So basically, these are all drawing attention to the experience of Lily. Now the thing is that we know Lily is the protagonist. So if we are being shown something in the narrative, we don't need to know that Lily is seeing it because we know Lily is seeing it. It's being shown in the narrative. This applies to first and third person. If you're in first person, you never have to say, I saw a tree because if the tree can be described, we know the narrator's describing it. And if you use this in a third person um, context, that means that you're just going to be tightening up the point of view to be psychically closer to your main character. So this is that paragraph rewritten without the filters. A blue pickup truck rumbled down the street. Lily's sinuses burned from the exhaust. Rain pattered against the concrete and beat it up on her face. The street was starting to flood. It's just so much smoother. There's a lot less words and those were just completely redundant words. We never need to be told that she heard the rain because we're hearing the rain. So it's implied that she heard the rain. So there are a lot of filter words out there. I'm gonna read a bunch to you right now, but there are a lot of them out there. These are ones that I grabbed when I just googled lists of filter words and um, got a bunch from the first two, but there's tons of them. Uh, to see, to hear, to think, to touch, to wonder, to realize, to watch, to look, to seem, to feel or feel like, Ken is also a filter. Decide, sound or sound like, notice, noted, experience, assume, believe, could, decide, look, notice, realize, seem, sound, think, watch, wonder. The list goes on and on. It applies to both sensory experience and mental experience. Things like phrases of realization, I realized, I decided. Um, those are things we don't need to hear because if the character's having the thought, we know that they're thinking it, we know that they're realizing it. Um, if they're seeing something, we know that they're seeing them. Filters can appear in a slightly different form. This is a kind of filter, is saying things like in my hand. So if I were to pick up this random jar and say, the ceramic is smooth in my hand. In my hand is a filter because if I'm feeling it, in a tactile way, and I'm describing it in a tactile way, you know that it's in my hands. Like, I doubt that I'm like feeling it with my face. So you don't have to say it's in my hand. It's also like when, when sometimes you'll read sentences like the sun reflected off the water in his eyes. That's both illogical and a filter because the sun is reflecting off the water, not it's not reflecting in his eyes. And also we don't need to know that it's in his eyes. We can just say the sun reflected off the water. It's a much cleaner image and that's what we want. We want to enhance the punch of, punch of our images as much as possible. So that was my video on filtering. It's a really simple technique, but it is so important. And I would say to cut these as often as possible. There are going to occasionally be times where you're going to need one, but unless you have a very logical reason why you need one, you don't need them. Your writing is just better off without them. When I learned this tip, I was honestly like, why didn't anyone teach me this before? All throughout school, the only writing tip that we were ever taught was set is dead, which is a terrible writing tip. This should be the go-to writing tip, and it's also actually very easy to implement. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in another video. I will be continuing on my series about prose. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr, and I will see you in another video.